Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Can we make demand for our daily bread before we go on? I have a lot of things I want to share with you. So are you ready? Join me in faith and in agreement as we release our faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread for today. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. That one, there's one thing you must learn from the Lord, and that's consistency. You do it because you are commanded to do it. You don't do it because you feel like it. You do it because he commanded you to do it. And because you're consistent, the activities of, or the reaction or the result of what you are doing will become consistent. Now, sometimes it will not happen immediately. It will not happen today you know sometimes you say, ah, i'm going to shake heaven and then you pray for 10 hours and nothing happens You're like <sighs> let me tell you this truth it is the consistency you put in you pray because you know to pray pray because you know you have to pray men ought always to pray and not to faint and when you have become consistent when your mind have adapted to the fact that this is my lifestyle it is the same thing with your physical body, how you handle your physical body. You may say, ah, I need to shed some weight. I need to shed some weight. And then you start going to the gym. You give yourself two months, three months, serious workout, serious dieting and all that. And then you lose some weight. Of course, you will. You lose some weight. You get back into shape according to your desire and, and the prescription of exercises that were, that were given to you. And then... After those three months, you see that you've achieved what you wanted to achieve. And then you go to sleep. What happens afterwards? All those things you lost will surely come back. Until you realize that I've got to make this thing my lifestyle. So you make your mind adjust to accommodate going to the gym, doing certain exercise. They all become part of your routine. Now you're not doing it because you have a target anymore. You're doing it because... It's your lifestyle. This is how you find lots of believers have inconsistency in their Christian work. Okay? So they feel, oh, I, I need to confess this scripture and confess this scripture because I want this thing done. And then they confess and declare, confess and declare. Then one miracle happens. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then they don't see any miracle again for a long time. And then they go, mm, maybe this thing doesn't work. You are the one that is not consistent. Is this something as little as what we do every day on this broadcast? Father, we make demand for our daily bread. Have, have your brain, have your mind accepted that that's your way. That's the way of life. Every day, you don't have to wait for me to do it because I just lead you to be sure you've done it, okay? Now, there's nothing wrong if you did it before and when you listen to this broadcast, we do it again. See, there's nothing wrong with that. That's adding partnership to your faith, okay? So, but then you on your own, you must get to that point where you're like, yeah, I'm gonna be asking God for my daily bread every day, whether this broadcast comes on or not, it becomes your routine. Hey, you're gonna realize at some point, not so long from now, you're gonna realize that Things just come to me easy. Now I get those testimonies. You know, I, I receive those testimonies. People go, truly, this thing works. Because I notice, you know, sometimes you don't notice because you, you don't see what major miracle happens. And there are things that will make you remember. Okay? Someone was talking to me and said, I noticed by this time last year, ah, I, something happened that made me compare this year and last year. And like, Hey, somehow things have been easy for me. I, I just realized I'm not as broke as I used to be last year. Meanwhile, jobs have not changed. Salary have not changed, okay? Like, I just realized by this time last year, I was under a lot of pressures to meet up this, to meet up that. But I, something has changed. I don't know, but, but I just realized I'm, I'm at rest. Things have been taken care of. I'm just taking care of those things with ease. You don't realize. And the person was saying that, you know, I was just thinking about the business and I'm like, oh, 
This is it. I began to ask God for my daily bread consistency, consistently. And it's been part of my life. I said, that's it. That's it. See, many times we are just looking for a quick fix, looking for a miracle. Just God, do something now, now, now. Make these things your life pattern and enjoy rest. It's good. Yeah, enjoy rest. Glory to God. I pray for you that a miracle is going to happen today in your life. That need that I've lingered for the past three days now, let today bring forth the answer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, we, we, I began showing you something yesterday from the book of John. And somehow we just went, you know, in a direction that God wanted us to go to. And I believe that was for somebody. John chapter 1, I told you yesterday. John chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, no one has seen God at any time. No one has seen God at any time. Now, take note of this. This is John speaking, okay? And he says, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him now take note now this is a scripture a lot of people hold on to and you hear them say nobody has ever seen god have you heard people talk like that before nobody has ever seen god i even hear, hear, heard a preacher one time talking about this and he says all those stories you read about um, god appeared to abraham and and things like that they are they are not real you know how how people are bold in error. Very amazing, praise God. Very amazing how people are bold in error. You see, the things of God requires lots of patience. So understand the knowledge of God. It requires lots of patience. And when I mean lots of patience, you've got to be consistent in your seeking to know. You don't read the scripture. I, I've, I've been in this thing for many years. I'm a teacher of God's word. That's that's my calling. God, God called me to teach his word. Okay. Now, whatever your calling is, see, there is grace that is apportioned to you according to what God has called you to do. And then number two, there is you now, your own part is to exercise great amount of patience. Yes. If not, you'll be making a lot of blunders. There is one thing that, you know, I, like I said, I've been in this thing for many years, many, many years, <laughs> praise God, many years. And the joy of my heart is, uh, you see, because as a preacher, sometimes the burden to bring forth a message is there. Yes. And that's why people get into a lot of errors, because you, you have to say something, you have to teach something. And if you mistakenly start out or just deviate into an error a bit, now, to prove that you are right, you will further go into that error. And your brain will now begin to manufacture things. And sometimes, I don't know if... Uh, years ago, I learned how to do that. Even this daily broadcast. I do listen to it myself. I do. I know how strange it was at the beginning, but I got used to it. I got used to hearing my voice preach. It's good. And, and then I got used to hearing the voice of God, even when I'm listening to, my, listening to myself. So it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Okay. But then as a teacher of God's word, it is important if you don't want to teach error, if you don't want to go into um, things you're going to regret, you want to exercise great patience to understand what you teach. We teach under the influence of the anointing. That's the truth. I won't lie about that. In other words, when, when, when the one who's called to teach, you know, like me, I can actually go for a meeting without studying, without doing anything. 
apart from praying and, and setting my mind on the Lord concerning that meeting. Now, you may see me not study. Uh, you may see me not once in a while. Of course, the Lord can drop a word in your heart and then you look. But I may not sit down with a note and start taking scriptures and taking. And then I go for that meeting. And then I, began to, I begin to minister. I can begin to go into deep mysteries that I've never imagined in my mind before. Yes. But then I will teach them so accurately because I'm teaching what is being given and that's the anointing of a teacher. A, a teacher, I've said this many times, people don't, you know, don't really get it. A teacher is not one who studies a lot and now comes and anybody can do that. I mean, any smart person can do that. You don't have to be extraordinarily smart even. Just, just know how to put words together, put things together. And these days, with the help of technology and even before with, with concordance, you want to teach on peace. You just go look for every scripture. You know, just today, just type peace in scriptures. And so it gives you every scripture that talks about peace. Now you begin to look at the ones that are relevant to what you want to communicate. And then you pick them. Then you do some study and arrange your scripture, your outlines and all that. And then you come to deliver. And so they wow, deliver this. Now I understand. It doesn't mean you're called to teach. A teacher knows himself. You may not even know. Apart from the fact that you get blessed by him. But a teacher who's called by God, he himself knows that it's not because of his study that he's teaching accurately like this. No, he knows. The same way with a prophet, a real prophet. Now, he knows that what he's doing is all by grace, not by anything he has done. He knows. So I'm not going to boast and tell you, of, I study a lot. Okay? I study a lot. That's what I spend my life doing. Let me just tell you, that's what I do with my life. I study. But you see, I don't study like you do or a lot of people do. What drives me to study is what I teach. I don't study, then teach. I teach, then study. Now, let me explain this to you. While I'm teaching, there are things that will come up because I'm teaching under the influence of the anointing, okay? Okay. So the Holy Ghost brings forth things that my mind was not used to. Or my mind did not even know. And, and sometimes, even while I'm teaching, I'll tell you this truth. In my heart, I go, Lord, I hope we are going to land on this thing. That, that's what's going through my mind. Because I set off and then we begin to go into depth. And I'm, I'm, my mind is wondering, what are, we, what are you saying? <laughs> but then I'm saying it so confidently and, and, and I'm wondering and the next thing the next scripture comes I may have known that scripture but not in this light the next, those who, who, who are called to this knows who, as you're listening to me you understand perfectly what I'm saying so you are going and then you're wondering dear Lord I'm in a trap right now <laughs> you know like you brought me into a trap right now then a scripture just comes that yay Sometimes we contain our joy. We contain, we, we contain ourselves. If not, sometimes you just want to run. You just want to run like, whoa, you know. But then you compose yourself like, okay, I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one teaching now. Okay, so, so but, but seriously speaking, sometimes it's so amazing. But then here's the point. When you are done with that meeting, you know that did not come from you. You know it. That did not come from you. That did not come from your personal knowledge. No. This came from the Holy Spirit. You know it because you, you know the Holy Spirit. And then in the midst of all that, so you know when the devil wants to come in. This is where practice helps you. Okay. So, so now you go back. I said, no, Holy Spirit, there are some things you said in that meeting. I, I've never seen it before. I need to understand it. Now it drives you to study. And when you're studying, now I've studied enough to tell you certain things. You know, I've studied enough. I said this, I think sometime last week. I've studied enough to tell you that I discovered the Greek, the Hebrew, all those things don't, don't give you the best answers. They don't. They don't. In fact, I remember recently, I had to check the meaning of some words in, in Greek and in Hebrew. And... 
I, I said to myself, I wasn't getting what I was looking for. Okay. All the Greek meaning, and they were not giving what the Holy Spirit has, has told me concerning that thing. So I go, wow. Um, what's going to happen now? Then the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, what you don't understand is these words, I can never see her. <laughs> okay. So we have, we have the, um, you know, we have the strong, um, exhaustive concordance of the Bible. Okay. It's a brand of concordance. It's, it's a publisher. Okay. And that strong gives you Hebrew and Greek meanings. Okay. And so I was, I was struggling with this thing. I said, I studied different words and like, mm -mm, this is not giving me what I, what I'm looking for. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, I think I never thought about it before that. He said, don't you know strong? I, I get the basket, the basket. These concordance, they were, they were, tuned to give answers to the bible they were not tuned to they're they are not really speaking hebrew and greek they are getting words to give you answers to the bible meaning they came after the bible okay now, even as i'm talking you may not understand what i'm saying right now but i like oh yeah the language was spoken in its form in its pure form okay and then a book was written that the book, the book communicates a message. Now, the people that now took this book, the Bible now, and they now want to give you interpretation of the Greek and the Hebrew, they already have the Bible. And somehow the message, what communication they feel the Bible is communicating is now what they want to now pick from the meaning of Hebrew and Greek and give you those meanings. So you have a problem. You have a problem. What's the problem you're going to have? Preconceived ideas already. So you will not get the real thing. So it brings us back to one, one truth. The only way you can really, really understand the scriptures is when you understand the person of the Holy Spirit. He's your teacher. He's the only one that can teach you. All these materials can still lead you astray. I've been there. I've been there. You know, Paul says, I speak in tongues more than you all. I can tell you, I study. I may not read the books you read, but I go for things that are connected to my purpose and my callings. And so, I, I see those things, I search them, I get stuck and then I know that you have to wait for the Holy Ghost now. That's why I say it requires lots of patience. I'm saying all this to tell you that you don't jump at these things. I stopped teaching on, on, on eschatology a few years ago. I stopped deliberately. I stopped. Now I stopped deliberately because of what the Spirit of God said to me. Because as a teacher you want to you want to teach on every topic, anything that um, is out there to teach. But I remember the last time, because I've done it for several times. You know, then I, I remember the last time I did it. Remember, I said you're teaching under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Even that, there is a limitation, especially when you say, I want to teach on a topic. Okay, now maybe there's a reason... Sometimes there are many questions people are asking, like, okay, you know what? Let me teach on these things. Okay. And then you try to do that. But then you have a problem because you, you now start bringing things from what you have known. Now there's another difference when the Holy Ghost says, I want you to teach on this topic. Now I have learned when the Holy Ghost says, I want you to teach on this topic. He is the one that will be giving you the vocabularies and the words concerning that topic. Now, in that situation, you learn things you have never known before. Even through the scriptures, you see things that you have never seen before. That's understanding-wise, okay? Understanding comes to you that never came to you before. So you look at the same scripture you've preached before, you've known before, you've confessed before. You look at it now like, hey, it says something completely different. 
Or they saying something deeper than what we knew. And that's the Holy Spirit. So what do you do? You go back. I can fast and pray for three days. Not looking for anything, but to understand something. When I ask the Lord, ask the Lord, he's not giving me an answer. Then I pull him aside and say, okay, Lord, look, we, we need to deal with this. I'll, I'll fast and pray. That's me. So when I come with depths of understanding, it's coming from two places. The Holy Ghost. And then the deep studying patiently with the Holy Spirit. He is now showing you through the scriptures. Praise God. I needed to set this foundation. I'm still setting the foundation straight. Because what we're talking, what we're going to be talking about is deep and big. <laughs> Praise God. So you need to be clear on these foundations. Now these things are not coming from the place of material study. There are lots of wonderful materials, don't get me wrong. Wonderful material. There are lots of, of voices out there that, that is from the Lord. But then you one who's called to teach must be sure your conclusions are Holy Ghost based. God bless you. My time is up today. Praise God. We're going to continue tomorrow. See you then. Bye.